For years, many PC vendors have offered low power systems based on efficient cores that frankly sucked in terms of performance. The CPUs were slow, the memory was slow, storage was slow, the networking was terrible. But now there's an answer to that in this little mini PC, which is an eight core processor and fast enough that you could use it as a desktop replacement. Well, in some scenarios. So let's back up for a sec. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the B-Link. EQ12 Pro. Now this mini PC uses the brand new Intel Core i3 N305 processor, which means that it uses the efficient cores that we used to call Atom. But in this Alder Lake N generation, they're much faster and there are eight cores. We're not stuck with only four cores anymore. And so B-Link took that eight core platform they built this little system right here with things like dual two and a half gig ethernet. And, uh, and that's what we're gonna review today. I have to say, I was expecting that the performance of this was gonna be much worse than it is. And this was a pleasant surprise as we were going through the process. But before we get too far, I just wanna say thank you to all of our STH YouTube members that are sponsoring this review, because with your support, we're able to go buy these things and actually do an independent review. That's gonna come into play when we get to our key lessons learned. So don't skip that part. Okay, so looking at the front of the system, we get a couple of common features. We get two USB 3 Gen 2, so 10 gigabit per second type A ports. We also get a headset jack, we get our power button, and then we get a clear CMOS button. At least this one, unlike some of the other models, this one is recessed, which is nice, so at least you don't do it by accident. On the sides of this unit, there are vents. On the top of the unit, you get a little B-Link EQ12 logo and then a nice little pattern. This chassis feels definitely plasticky. It's definitely a step below something like the GTR6 where you have a little bit nicer metal chassis. Now, moving to the back of the system, you get a couple things that I was not expecting. So first on the USB side, you get a type A and a type C port. That type C port not only can be USB-C, but you can also run a third display output because you have two HDMI ports as standard. Now, all of these are 4K 60 only, so you're not gonna get like, you know, higher, higher frame rates or anything like that, but at at least, you know, you can drive three displays if you want to off of the system. You get your 12 volt DC input and then you get two network jacks. These are two two and a half gig ethernet network jacks. This is awesome. Like a lot of mini PCs had been only one gigabit per second, like for years. And now we get two two and a half gig ethernet. So like five X the performance. We've been doing an entire series on STH on new network switches that really take advantage of two and a half gig ethernet. You can go find the guide that we have. We've reviewed, I think something like almost two dozen of them at this point. We'll link some of those in the description. The other thing you'll notice on the back is that we get a fan vent outlet. And then on the bottom of the system, well, uh, we get another B-Link feature that is so small, but it's very exciting if you've used other systems. What B-Link does is they have these giant rubber feet that go down the entire sides. So when you put it on a surface, you're not gonna mark, it's not gonna move anywhere. And that's very nice. Some other vendors put rubber pads over their screws. And if you go and pull those off, well, then you're gonna find that you end up killing the adhesive. And when you kill that adhesive, it's hard to stick back on and then they fall off later. So I like the fact that B-Link has not just little tiny ones, they have big ones that will actually stay on the bottom of the chassis, but also that the screw holes go through this because that's way easier to access. And one other small feature, they have how to get into the BIOS on the bottom of this. Now, one other tiny little thing that B-Link makes it even easier to get on the inside of your system, they have this little pull tab and that helps you pull the bottom cover off. Once you're inside the system, you see something that looks actually very close to the B-Link SER6 Pro that we reviewed recently, where you have the ability to put a two and a half inch SSD right here, if you want to, or maybe a hard drive, but these days, put an SSD in here, guys. And then the other thing that you have is you have a secondary fan. So B-Link has a fan on top of this for the CPU, but they also have a fan on the bottom of this in this whole black cover thing and airflow guide for the like DDR5 memory and also the SSDs and all that kind of stuff. So it actually helps a lot with cooling. One thing that I think that B-Link could do a better job of is that these screws to get this cover off are recessed quite a bit. So you can't use like a normal, like you know, the LTT creator edition screwdriver. You can't use this because there's just not enough uh, room, it's too big. And so you have to use a smaller screwdriver to get in there and get the screws out. 
Okay, and once you're inside, what you can see is that over here, we have the thermal pad for cooling the M.2 SSD. The M.2 SSD that we get in here is uh, is frankly pretty weak. Now it is a half terabyte unit, which is nice, but it's also a PCIe Gen 3, I think by one SSD. So it is, uh, it is not fast guys. The other thing that you're gonna see though, is that we have a single DIMM slot. So this DIMM slot is a DDR5 slot and it takes a DDR5 SO DIMM. We have 16 gigabytes of memory that came with this unit, um, but, but there's only one slot. So you can't just like slot in another 16 gigs if you want or something like that. You're gonna have to replace this if you do want to. However, I just, I just think that 16 gigs is like perfect for the CPU. So it's a very good pairing. I wouldn't touch that. Now under the M.2 SSD, you're gonna see that we have a CNVIO card and this is an Intel AX101, which is a Wi-Fi 6, but it's only a one by one. It's not like a two by two. Uh, so, so it's not necessarily the best Wi-Fi. In fact, I would actually say that a lot of folks may look at that and say like, uh, maybe I'm gonna go put like an AX211 or a 201 or something like that in the system. You know, I just kind of wish that they had the better solution in there because it's probably only a couple dollar upgrade. But it is really hard to be upset about that in terms of networking because you do have two, two and a half gig ethernet ports, which means that this has faster networking performance than a whole lot of PCs out there. We showed this with the Asus Store flash door system recently, but you can take these two NICs, put them into a switch. You don't have to set up a LACP or anything like that. And if you use SMB3 multi-channel, you can go to a NAS and get five gigabits per second of performance out of the two NICs without like having to do all kinds of like crazy network configurations and stuff like that. So to me, that's at least something that if I were telling folks, you know, why why have two, two and a half here? Uh, that, that to me is the big feature, right? That you can go and get pretty fast performance to an ass on a system like this without having to do crazy networking stuff. You can even just use an unmanaged switch for that. With that, let's get to the performance. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of this little box because that was surprising. This has the Intel Core i3 N305. Now that Intel Core i3, I think is a little bit misleading because if you hear Intel Core, you probably immediately think like, oh, those that has performance cores in it, but this does not. This is an Alder Lake, but an Alder Lake N processor, which means that this has all efficient cores. These are called E-Cores. Now there are definitely some things that differentiate the E-Cores that are in here versus previous generations. First, you know, we have a new generation with Alder Lake and we have Alder Lake N. And then the other thing is that not we, we're not stuck with like four cores. We get a total of eight cores in this processor, which is awesome because just having more cores helps. The other thing is that for this 15 watt TDP processor, we get the turbo frequency up to about 3.8 gigahertz. So these things are not running at like, you know, one point something gigahertz or like two gigahertz, like max, you're getting 3.8 gigahertz on a fairly modern core. So these things have a pretty decent experience when you're using it. Now the multi-core benchmarks are showing that we get good performance, but what I wanna also just talk about real quick is the Geekbench results. Because we looked at this unit versus some of the other units that we have, and just kind of giving you some idea, the single thread performance on this feels more like the Ryzen like 3400GE, which, um, you know, you know, frankly, when I use the systems back to back, it feels about right. And on the multi-core side, the fact that we have those eight cores means that we get a lot of performance. We're not bound by, you know, only having four cores that we've had, you know, for the J for like 4125 generation, and then also even like newer ones like the 6400 series, and then uh, the N like 5105, N6005, like those kinds of series. Let's just like, like this is an eight core processor. So it means that like, you know, we're not just talking about a couple Couple, couple megahertz difference between this and like the N100. We're talking about four more cores. And just to highlight this, let's go back two years to when we were thinking about doing this like STH mini PC series. We bought a whole bunch of like Intel J4125, which was like a 2019 processor, but it was still, you know, hitting those like $200-ish price range. And the something that you notice is like the single thread performance on those sucks. They're very slow. The multi-thread performance is not great. And when we did benchmarks, we'll just throw Geekbench up here. You can see the difference very clearly in the single thread and multi-thread performance. And just to kind of make this a little bit more clear, we did a very simple test. Let's just open up Microsoft Edge and let's go do it across a couple of different systems. So the first system that we're gonna use is gonna be our baseline, which is this one. And you're gonna see that it opens up relatively quickly. Then we're gonna go swap very fast over to a Core i7-12700T system, which is the HP Elite Mini 600 G9 that we just reviewed. And you're gonna see that the opening speed is pretty much the same. And here is the Ryzen 9 in the B-Link GTR5. And that's pretty much the same speed as well as the other two. 
2. And now let's use Microsoft Edge on that older mini PC. And by the way, this is still running Windows 10 Pro because uh, we, we couldn't upgrade this one to Windows 11. So we're still on Windows 10 Pro. And as we open Edge, you're gonna see that you can almost clock this thing with a sundial, it's so slow. So I think that's the big difference with Alder Lake N. You actually get an experience that feels a lot more like a desktop processor. Now, of course, if you wanna do things like high-end gaming, if you have a lot of like things that are like super CPU intensive that don't scale well over multiple E cores, well, you know, you're gonna see better performance on the P cores, and that's why Intel still has the P cores. At the same time, this is really showing that the E cores are starting to hit that point where they're really, you know, really a pretty good desktop experience. If you had something like an Intel Core i5 6500T or something like that, this might actually be an upgrade. But of course, you wanna see the power consumption and noise of those things, so let's get to that. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and noise, but let's talk about it a little bit more than we normally do, because I think that the reason that you get something like this, an all e-core processor, is really because you want lower power consumption. So we have this thing idling at the Windows 11 Pro desktop right now, and when we do that, our noise floor in the studio is about 34 dBA, and when you look at the little sound meter here, you'll see that we've gone from about 34 up to about 35.8, 36, somewhere in there. Now, looking at the idle power consumption, you'll see that we're bouncing around from maybe about 11 to about 12 and a half, 13 watts or so, which is not bad. Again, though, it is more than we saw on the Tiny Mini Micro HP units, which are in that four to seven range. So it's kind of maybe the difference between an HP, you know, a, a high volume, unit or something like that versus something that's a lower volume mini PC like this. A lot of folks ask us, you know, why you'd ever get a tiny mini micro node versus a mini PC from a smaller vendor. And like, that's one of the reasons, right? It's just, there's a different level of engineering that's going into these things. Because it seems weird that an e-core only processor idles this high. Now, the reason that it's idling this high though is uh, is for another reason that we're gonna talk about in a second, but let's go do a little run here and let's go show you what it looks like when we start stressing the CPU. So what you'll see here is that our power consumption has gone up to maybe about 36, 37 watts or so, and it'll hold that for a little while. The noise is up to the 37, 38 dBA range, but now what you're gonna see is that we've fallen down, and this is kind of normal processors, we've gone down to about like the 24, 25, 26 watt range. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go from the high performance mode in Windows to the power plan that is balanced performance, right? And so what you'll see is that as soon as we did that, the power consumption at idle went down from that like, you know, say 12-ish watt range down to about nine to 10 watts. So and so let's go stress the CPU under that condition. Now we're in about that 35, 36 watt TDP range. And now we're falling down back into that 24, 25 watt range. But you can still hear the unit, so It's not like we've gone from a loud unit to something that's silent. Okay, now what I wanna do is move into the power saver mode. And I wanna just show you that real quick. So now we have hit power saver on Windows and uh, you'll see that this is gonna go down a little bit. So we're now kind of, this will sit usually in some about 8.8 .8 to about 9.5 watts. It's not a huge difference, but it is there. Now we're gonna go stress CPU and see how that goes. And you're gonna see that we're in 35 watt range. And then we're gonna go back down into that 20 something watt range. Now, the fact that we're saving power in the low power mode versus the high performance mode also means that we are losing some performance by taking that lower power consumption. So let's just pull up some Geekbench results and just kind of show you the kind of range there where we go from like the high performance to low performance. And you're gonna see that there is a noticeable difference between the two profiles. That totally makes sense given the power consumption that we saw, but at the same time, I just wanna point it out so that folks know that there are some options that you can do, even if you don't wanna get into BIOS tuning or anything like that, you can just do this right from Windows. Also, I just wanna kinda of let you listen to this thing and uh, so you can hear what it sounds like even at idle. And then here it is stressed. This is something that I think B-Link could do a better job of. I can hear this unit easily over all of the studio, like light fans, the camera fans. And again, that really should not be the case comparing a 15 watt TDP CPU that's in here in the N305 versus a 35 watt TDP CPU that we have in one of those Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes that we just reviewed. With that, let's get to our key lessons learned. Okay, so for all of these videos, I love to have key lessons learned, and boy, do we have some here. 
So the first one I think is the obvious one, right? Which is the fact that the performance that you get out of the new N305 is just so much better. When we looked at like say the J4125 that we've seen in some routers, but we've also seen in some mini PCs like this, we get way better performance. In fact, a fun fact is that we started thinking about doing this STH mini PC series after Project Tiny Mini Micro launched. I was talking to Will who does our SSD reviews and, and you know we were talking about like, hey, should we go do like a mini PC review series? So I went and bought a bunch of these little PCs on Amazon. And frankly, the ones that we got, like this Alaska one or whatever, uh, they, they sucked. I, I really did not like the user experience, just like kind of going around the Windows desktop. They're just too slow. And while these were the e-cores back then, these are the e-cores now, and they're awesome. Not only do we get faster cores, better single thread performance, but we also get more cores. So we have twice as many cores, which gives us just overall that two to four X the performance. But there's more than just the CPU performance because a lot of folks just focus on that. Let's look at the other things that are in this. Like for example, we get better USB connectivity. We get two, two and a half gig ethernet ports versus a single one gig ethernet port on this one. And even the Wi-Fi is better. In the older generations, you were lucky if you got some kind of 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, and uh, now we get Wi-Fi 6, albeit the one by one, which is uh, not great, but what are you gonna do? Still, it's a newer standard, and it's generally better to have all Wi-Fi 6 devices if you can. Now, while I do think that B-Link could do a little better on the idle power consumption and noise on these things, I think the bigger lesson learned is something that we learned kind of by accident that you don't hear a lot of people talk about. And that is what happened when we were testing different operating systems, and we went to reinstall Windows 11 Pro. Now, if you have something like a Project Tiny Mini Micro node where you have a Dell, HP, Lenovo system, they usually have a BIOS license key. And some of the fanless units that we've reviewed, they'll actually activate Windows just using those BIOS keys. So, so that's something that we thought that this B-Link unit would do. And it uh, turns out that we were wrong. So what happened was we went to reinstall Windows 11 Pro and we just, you know, have the USB stick with it on there because we have those in the lab with all the major OSs. And so we go and try installing it and uh, and it said that our license was, wasn't active. And so then I went on the B-Link support site and I couldn't find anything. Then I did a search and I found that on the B-Link support site, there's some way that they have where you can install Windows using a custom download, which is always a little, makes me a little bit nervous, but okay. Of course, when we looked at the support site, this system did not have a Windows 11 download. And so I did what anybody would do. I sent a note into B-Link support and they got back to me within about a day or two. And they came back with uh, two emails. One of them was a, you know, here's like a mega.nz, uh, you know, like download link for their Windows 11 installer, which, um, which, which makes me you know, a little bit nervous, frankly. And they also had a guide on how to go do it. But then the other one, which was really interesting as well, is that they sent me a separate email with two Windows 11 Pro license keys. I don't know how they knew that my machine was tied to those license keys. They probably know that I review these things because I did send it for my STH email account. But on the flip side, um, you know, we, we didn't get this unit from them, we purchased it. So I don't really know how they managed to figure out that those were our keys, or maybe they just went out and bought them and sent them to us so that we could keep our review going. I, I don't know exactly what happened, but I did think that's interesting just because I think a lot of folks, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about the initial setup and, and that kind of process but if you have to go do something like install Windows 11 Pro from scratch in the future, you're gonna run into an issue like this. And I just want people to know that there is a difference in support, especially you know when you look at some of the other systems that we review and something like a B-Link PC, but it's also very common in these kind of mini PC vendors. How about that for a key lesson learned? Hey guys, I hope you like this look at this little mini B-Link PC. Frankly, the Intel Core i3 N305 is an awesome chip. Having eight e-cores is phenomenal. And the fact that the modern e-cores are actually usable for a desktop and don't make you just like kind of want to pull your hair out. Well, if, if you have hair, that's something that I just was not expecting in this generation. And I thought it was absolutely awesome. I still think for a lot of our readers, they're gonna to wanna to go up to P-Core based systems. Like, you know, B-Link has AMD Ryzen ones. There are also ones that, you know, we review that are based on Intel chips and all kinds of stuff. So I think that there is definitely merit to that. But I also think that if you were thinking that like this E-Core only system was gonna be super slow, this is definitely not the case anymore. And so I was super excited about that. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And if you did like this video, well, why don't you check out some of our other videos, give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an Awesome day.